My name is Margaret Doner. I'm Dr. Stacy Lamar. My name is Adam Bernstein. My name is Alexandra Tabaczynska. I'm Cody Bryce. You'd be amazed at how easy it is to get to a past life. My soul went right back to me being just a ball of light. I was, and I, I, I believe it, that I really felt the entire universe. It's almost like I, I knew everything for a microsecond. It's not only one entity, it's the collective of high vibrational beings of light. I had the experience of dying and being dead for about seven minutes or so, which isn't really that uncommon uh, on earth to, to die, but uh, the coming back is a little bit. You know. <laughs> My name is Margaret Doner, and I'm a licensed massage therapist. That's how I started my journey into healing. Um, and I'm also a past life regression therapist. I studied with Roger Wolger, um, and I've been practicing that for over 20 years um, in massage for 30 years. So, And I do energy work and healing. Um, and I work with my husband at Partners in Massage. Um, and or sort of organically out of that work, a lot of my interest in what you think of as starseed, right? These starseed beings, people, um, those of us who relate to an idea of not just living one life, but living multiple lives, not only human, but possibly even non-human, or having come from other star systems. Um, and it grew organically out of that work as a healer, as a massage therapist, and a past life regression therapist. I began this journey through my past lives, other people's past lives. And I began to uncover more and more and more layers. Unbelievable. So I remembered for me, my husband Chris and I were in Atlantis together. We were teachers on a small island in Atlantis. And I remembered there was an enormous crystal that came out of the sort of the ground. I'm sure it had been planted there somehow. And they had, had built almost what you would think of as like an amphitheater or something around it. And people would go and sit in the you know seats or the benches or you know along the, the grass, whatever around it. And when you felt like you needed to get energy and energized, you could close your eyes and meditate and connect with the crystal and draw energy. And when you felt that you had energy to give, you would sit and you would sort of meditate and put energy in the crystal for others to gain energy. And there was a very much of a of a, a strong sense of community at that time and a sense that we were giving energy back to the earth itself through these crystals. You could call me like an anchor of vibration. I anchor down these really high vibrations that go down into earth and she kind of accepts it and resonates and with it. We brought in with us, because I think Atlantis and Lemuria were both starseed civilizations to some, to some extent. We brought with us knowledge from these other places, Syria, the Syrian star system, the Pleiades and you know, Arcturus and, um, and Lyra and so forth. And so there was this really um, profound amount of knowledge and awareness. Was he, we were human. I, we looked exactly, I was male, but we were human, yeah. yeah. I'm Dr. Stacy Lamar. I am from Poughkeepsie, New York. 
I am a nurse practitioner by license. I have a doctorate in public health from New York Medical College, but my businesses these days have been more alternative and complementary. With the past life work that I did, my openness and my, I think it was just my soul was ready to reveal. And my soul went right back to me being just a ball of light. So I couldn't go any farther than that because in my past life work, I was just this floating little ball in the star system. Well, firstly, my name is Adam Bernstein, and I'm a psychic medium and a healer and a channel. And I think my beginnings started when I was really little because I have memories of seeing spirits. And also, I used to like to do this thing for my carriage and point to people and then consciously send energy to them. Where, where I got that from or how I knew that, probably from other dimensions or other lifetimes, and just kind of watch their reactions. Yeah, there's one lifetime. I think it was you know, chronologically in, in human terms, my, my last lifetime. I mean, past lives to me are parallel because all time's happening simultaneously. But a good example is that I um, always had this recurring dream when I was a child of being older and, and being heavy and, and trying to get out of my chair with my loved ones begging me not to do it and then my legs that I couldn't feel were just completely ineffective and I'd fall to the ground. Now, at, when I was little um, and I was getting my, my you know, childhood vaccines, I, I must have been three years old, and I was asking the doctor, who was very kind, like which each one is, and then he, then I said, and what, what's this one? And he said, for polio. And I remember just freezing up and just like this, this chill coming over me. And uh, then for you know, months, I would torture my poor mom that she had to tell me over and over again that I'll never get polio because Dr. Saltz made the vaccine and everything. For me, it's it's my natural state of, state of being. Yes, I, me as as Marta, da, I can I can reach out to your memories. Yes, I have access to the Akashic, right? So I do remember my Akashic from the past, but I also remember Akashic of of myself from the future, like from a million years from now or about Earth, what's go going to happen, yes? I don't think I've been doing this a long time, coming back and incarnating as human. And, and I'm certainly hoping I'm not coming back anymore because this world is tough. This world is tough. I want to be able to get back to the system where, where I feel that, that innate eternal peace that I had as that star energy. When a soul is choosing to die, right? So, and I believe we do choose death. So uh, if I'm choosing to die, I send out a signal. Everybody interested in me, who's working with me, what humans would call my guardian angels, those are the words humans use, would know that it was getting to my death point. And a higher vibrational being who needed to come in and have a vessel, right, would uh, ask for a soul exchange. And so my soul, as human, if I was human, would leave and die, but I, my body wouldn't die. Another soul would come in, take over the vessel, look like me, and um, have, have a bit of adjustment, especially the adult walk-ins have a lot of hard time because you're coming from very high vibrational, loving place to suddenly a world that's operating from fear and greed. Mm, I think that's very common for starseeds to feel they have some kind of mission or purpose for being here that they need to fulfill. You are not a walk-in. I am. You are a I am, yeah. But I was young. I agreed to take on the karma of the being that I took over in order to use the vessel and clear the karma to the best of my ability so that I could use this vessel 
hopefully, what I, I feel my mission is, is to help people understand, first of all, I get very emotional about this, very passionate about this, the absolute beauty and divinity and importance of the human soul, the divine human soul template. I believe in it absolutely. I think it is. it was constructed originally, and this is a long conversation, but it was constructed originally to link humanity, the, the original divine soul template, to link humanity to multi-dimensions, right? So that hu- human beings could become fully cognizant and aware in multi-dimensions and have mastery over multi-dimensions. In my past life work, I was just this floating little ball in a star system. And I could see it, I could feel it, and I saw where I got out of the star system and where things began to go amiss. And how I got pulled out of this safe zone. I was in this amazing safe zone, almost like um, my own Mecca, I guess. You know, this peaceful, beautiful star galaxy. And I accidentally took the wrong turn and ended up in um, a situation where I was vulnerable in that life. And that was my first memory of knowing that my soul is light. So there's been times where I've woken up and seen light, you know, especially in my childhood. That's definitely happened, but I'm not like, I wouldn't call myself an experiencer or somebody that remembers being abducted and having experiments done to them. I just feel a connection and especially to the Arcturians and and, and as I do my channeling, a lot of times this Arcturian or, or Palladian intelligence is working through me. And I believe that we're, we're a seeded species, that, uh, that we have alien DNA that, that was um, kind of implanted with the uh, old, um, like Neanderthal DNA. That, that's why uh, for 200,000 years, uh, about 200,000 years ago, humans made this, this evolutionary leap. My Syrian light was that I was blue, I had blue skin. You know, the blue man group, right? Here they, they've come down and they're saying, oh, we have blue skin, right? And I remembered a life. I did a meditation. We were going to Teotihuacan on a spiritual journey. And so I was doing meditations with, uh, with Teotihuacan. And there was a guy a long time ago in the 70s named Dick Sutphin, and he happened to put out a meditation tape for Teotihuacan, interestingly enough. And I listened to it, and that whole Syrian lifetime came back to me. And I had a big head, the cone head, right, and blue skin. And I would go from the ships through the Temple of the Sun, and I would relay to the priest in the the cavern inside the Temple of the Sun. I would uh, go through the portal there and tell him about what was happening in the Orion Wars and as things became more dangerous. And, you know, it's interesting how many of those civilizations like Teotihuacan, suddenly disappeared and, you know, archaeologists goes, well, we don't know where they went, you know, where did they all go? And uh, it's possible they went into the ships, right? So as we walked along the Avenue of the Dead in in Teotihuacan, there were these um, flat uh, column, like huge, like not just a column, but huge, um, you know, like like square uh, columns, I guess is the best word, and they went down the Avenue of the Dead, and as we walked by, I said, oh, well, that's where the UFOs used to land, you know? And a lot of people um, have these memories. So as a past life regressionist, if somebody goes back to a life in Teotihuacan, and they say, I remember ships would visit occasionally, and they would land on these or something, you know, that's how I would get also get information or confirmation where other people would remember these stories or have these experiences in these spiritual places, obviously. I was always very fascinated as a child with the big island of Hawaii. In fact, my best friend and, and one of the people that works for me moved there. And I would always look on the map and, and just look at the big island of Hawaii. And 
later on I, I learned through other channels or other resources, I, I can't remember offhand, that the Arcturians have some portal like right at, at Kilauea, like right, right where the volcano is on the big island. And the other thing is that the Arcturians were said to be more like the warrior race. So let me back to my, to my uh, awakening. Okay. Okay. Yes. okay. Thank you for this question. Thank you. Um, so, may I ask you, have you heard about walk-in? Have you heard about walk-in? Walk-in? Walk-in, yes. Um, it's like a one soul did the work on Earth, right? Okay. And there is another light being like replacing uh, in the same body, right? I am walk in, right? I see, I see. Uh -huh. Okay, so her name is Marta Da. Yes. I saw that name, yes. Yes, and she is star mother, Pleiadian star mother, right? Okay, this yes. is very deep, it's very deep. It is what it's, yes. But it's wonderful. It's it's very it's very it's very well natural for me now, mm -hmm. right? Uh, many people I know three walk-ins uh, in, uh, in my close friends circle, right? Yes. And they are all Pleiadians, and we are all connected. Yes. Okay. But each of us uh, resonates on earth with different frequency right like as you said we have a different uh a purpose right like a healing or teaching or or be just present on earth and bring that frequency high uh, uh to human understanding yes but um that's the origin i haven't had physical visitations but i have lots of communication different species or if you want to call it that the different you know groups um it's my like main i don't know i don't want to say main <laughs> you know, basically pleiades you know the, the pleiades are the ones i connect strongest with because they are the most involved with my life uh they are the like parents they kind of help you get through the lessons and set up lessons for you to grow and i think the work I do, and I hope others do, is about empowering other people to do the same thing. Learning who you are at the level of your soul is not easy. And it really, it, it, it's not that it isn't possible, but it's not a trick, right? It means you have to peel the onion. It, you have to be willing to do the work, and you have to be willing to to do past life work and to meditate and maybe do silent retreats and face your fears and face down, you know, things that are standing in the way. Um, it isn't easy. The second business I own is the Source NY, the wonderful space that you are in right now. This is my sanctuary. This is a place where people come to heal, to help to receive answers or guidance from the divine from whatever angel, angelic realm is around them. And we help to uh, facilitate and offer energy-based healing to those people. The main message of mediumship is, is nobody dies. There's just, yeah, when we cross over, our bodies die, obviously, but we go into a different vibration or a different bandwidth of energy. So uh, it gives them peace. It, it gives them peace and uh, and it helps them to heal. And, and I, I like to think that, that I can help open the door for them to learn how to communicate with their deceased loved ones on their own. My name is Aleksandra Tabaczyńska. I was born in Poland and in 2010 I moved to England and then I started traveling across the world, right? I am channeler, right? And uh, I am also quantum healer. I am honored enough, uh, I am honored to meet people on their spiritual path, right? So the, let's say, divine connections, 
uh, between me and and my my future friends. It's it's mostly for the heart the heart awakening. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so, in other words, I work as a, a heart activation, the new heart, the new earth heart, right? So when people listen to the voice, like now, the the, the vibration of Marta the voice, yes, activates something. It's like a, a DNA memory is activating it, itself in themselves. But there were a group of Pleiadians who were in charge of keeping the vibration of the Pleiades above the lower astral, meaning above the third and fourth dimension. And these beings, I call them queen bees, were like what, what humans would think of as large angels. I, you have to use human words. So, and, and, they've, and were able to draw energy directly from source, um, as many healers do on Earth today, right? They understand Reiki and so forth, how to draw energy from source and how to bring it to their hands. And queen bees, being this sort of large angel beings, were able to draw energy from source, connect all their energy, um, angel body to angel body, and raise the frequency or the vibration of the Pleiades above lower astral, meaning above the third and fourth dimensions, and, and allow uh, the world, that world at that time, to exist in a place of non-duality, non of oneness, what, what everybody's always longing for. I felt that I can do a service by, by waking people up, not only to the light, but also to the dark, what they'll encounter with destructive forces. And if we remain naive, to, to, the, to the family of dark and their agenda, and we pretend it doesn't exist, or we hide our way, ourselves away in communities and we think only of our own ascension and not of a global uh, awakening that you're talking about, um, then I don't think we've fulfilled our mission. I felt that I was given the experience of dark energies in order to teach others and help others understand how to maneuver and work their way around these dark energies um, as they try to ascend their own energy, get rid of fear. This was a friend of mine. She came in for a past life regression. My husband was not, not where I am now, but it was where we lived at the time. And my husband was upstairs in the living room and I was down in my study downstairs. And all of a sudden, she um, transformed into a, you know, what some people will call a demonic spirit. And her, just like it was like out of one of those movies, right? Her face changed, her voice changed. Um, she um, was very, very aggressive, like t talking about how she, you know, and now it was a he or some sort of weird being almost was robotic, which was interesting, and uh, saying, you know, it was going to kill me, it was going to get me. Um, and the energy was so bad and so enormous that upstairs, where my husband was, not knowing any of this going on, he said the coats were flying out of the coat rack, the hats were flying out of the hat rack, everything was going crazy. And I was not equipped at that time to handle something like that. I just didn't know. So what did I know? I knew sage. <laughs> I knew light the sage. I knew go to the light, <laughs> right? I didn't know that there were beings that were, you know, what humans call demonic, right? Um, I knew that there were lost human souls, that there were ghosts, um, that there were poltergeists even, but this was far beyond that. It really felt, um, it felt demonic, but also, like I said, it almost had a robotic kind of voice. And, um, and I learned you don't, with that being, you know, you say go to the light, it kicks and screams, so it gets it angrier. So it was a really hard, scary session. Spirit, I'm going to put it that way, my guides have always prepared me 
Um, I'm not saying they made it easy, but they've always given me what I need to meet the next task. And a few days before that, I had met a woman who'd given me her business card. She said to me, if you ever have a real entanglement with anything you can't handle, if you think dark, you just give me a call. And I put it in my next to my bed. And um, that night, my phone lines, by the way, were cut. So I couldn't even call out for, for hours. This entity had, had made it impossible to even call her for help for hours. And if my husband and I that night were lying in bed, just sh- really shaking with fear. The energy was very dark and very frightening. And I, I just never encountered anything like that. So um, finally the lines came out. I called her and she, I got her right away. And she said, repeat after me. And I don't really know what she told me to say at that point, but I repeated it. And this was before I was working with the angels. I wasn't even channeling angels yet. And uh, immediately I said to Chris, I said, Chris, there are two large archangels on our roof. I said, and there are a whole lot of little angels spinning around down in that room, clearing out the space. And then another uh, angel came and went right into my husband and he went right to sleep peacefully. And my guardian angel came and went right into me. I went to sleep peacefully and I woke up and I was much better, but I knew it was time for me to begin another part of my journey. Another, I, I, I always said to everyone, they threw me in the deep end of the pool and they said, swim. And, um, and it was not easy for me because I had to learn so much I didn't understand about about th- what you know they call the dark side of the force. I, I realized that the new age, as it has been taught for the most part, has tried to avoid any discussion of dark energy because many people, many practitioners are terrified as I was. And, and so they say, oh, it, you know, oh, oh, no, no, don't talk about it. You'll bring it to you. You know, don't talk about it. It, it, you know, or you're just making it come to you or making as if somehow looking around at the whole world and all the horrors that have gone on isn't, if that doesn't tell you there's some dark energy out there. I mean, my God. Then in my opinion, we are living in a very dual um, society. We always have been in dual society. If you go back to Old Testament, it's light versus dark. You go into the New Testament, it's Jesus versus the devil. Um, if you go into today's society, you've got light versus dark at all levels. You have people that are really not necessarily good people and then the people around that are the good people. And I identify the people that are really here just trying to take care of one another. I have had experiences with energy forms that have not identified as an alien. I have had experiences with orbs. I've had experiences with humans that have crossed over to the other side and have been able to manifest in light. And I do a lot of work with the angelic realm. There are people who are in love with the earth and this living library of amazing genetic material. And there are people who don't care and there are others who are actively destroying it. And I don't care what you call it. I mean, if I have a memory of an ancient war, um, it doesn't matter because that's not what's happening right now, right? It's interesting. But we have to understand that um, that the human soul is intimately connected to this planet, right? We talk about how, yes, we're made up from the stars, but we're also deeply connected to the earth. And right now, the billionaires are not using their billion dollars to help heal the earth, right? They're building space rockets, like just today Richard Branson did, and they want to leave the earth. They're trying to go to Mars. And 
I find that very interesting because what does that tell you about who they are and about what's important to them, right? If you had, I don't know, $98 billion, I mean, they had to make up words, new words for the amount of money that Bezos has, right? And new words to describe these level of trillionaires. Would you be spending all of that to go to Mars? You see, I love the Earth, and most star seeds, and they may come from star seed planets, but they understand how precious this place is to fight for this planet on the site on the side of love and creation and healing, uh, or to fight against this planet for destruction. Um, it's the old war. I think our mission was bigger than just our own awakening. I think our own awakening was step one. Through my mentors and the mentoring process and doing some past life work, I really was able to gain strength and validation in all the thoughts that I had when I was a small child, that I am different, that I am not just a human. I am not here to just be. I have a bigger purpose in life. And I say that without ego, because some people would say, well, this person's just arrogant, this person just has an ego. No, I know now with the work that I've done that I come from the star energy systems. I come from Pleiades. My soul is Pleiadian. I feel that and I believe that within me because that aligns with me and it makes me feel like that's the right answer. If you say to me, Stacy, do you feel like you're German or do you feel like you're um, Hebrew or whatever? No, I feel Pleiadian. My human body has blood ethnicity, right, for different cultures, but within my DNA, I believe that there's a Pleiadian star existence. And I believe that in everybody's DNA, even though it hasn't been shown yet or or identified yet, there is something deeper within us than than just the human that we are. I think that we're talking about um, life on other planets and the the whole alien technology and, and do aliens exist. I think that anybody that does not believe that there are other life forms outside of planet Earth is significantly closed minded. And they're basically here to help us evolve and grow because we're in this great awakening now. We're in this uh, time of of evolution that's so rapid. It's far greater than anything we've experienced. And as that's happening, we're opening our consciousness and more and more people are going to become aware that we're not alone, that we have our loved ones, we have our spirit guides, we have ascended masters, angels, and then we have interdimensional or extraterrestrial beings, beings of light that are, that are working with us and helping us through, through, our, um, through, through our evolution at this time. Yeah. Because if you think about, about peace, it is, okay, it comes from the peace. But when you find the peace, in the peace you find the, the freedom of creation, right? Without any, any thinking or understanding or anything like this. You simply create for yourself, yes? And in this creation for yourself, you create for everyone, yes? Uh, suddenly you feel that you are the creator of, of, of earth, of the new earth. Mm-hmm. And then when with this, with this special abilities, special abilities which star children bringing in to our universe, to the, this global village, the communities, right? The vibration is so, so high that uh, I like to say that we have no choice just to expand. Yeah, I would say the entire universe is looking at our planet right now uh-huh. because we do have a very unique way that we've come to this ascension process, this awakening. Um, we've had a very complicated past, <laughs> let's say, in history. <laughs> and uh, so the energies that are on earth now have been forced to accelerate so much faster than any other civilization had to do it. So let's say that from a civilization to get to what would be called like Christ consciousness, this kind of uh, awakened state of, uh, you know, consciousness of thing, 
it would take about 100,000 years, let's just say 100,000 years. We had to do it in about 10,000. So we had this like go, go, go thing on our earth. We had to just like do it so quickly. And that's why we are so kind of looked at and around the universe is so once you kind of get deep into yourself and start letting some of that stuff go, so letting that old programming, you know, go of your past, you start letting love flow through. And once love, light, gratitude, those frequencies hone themselves into you, you become this beacon that allows so many opportunities to come. As you ask me, as you ask me, what will be next, right? For star children, for all those beautiful uh, light beings on earth, yes? Those angels, uh, Lemurians, Arcturians, yes? Um, the stars. I see this year, 2021, as the year of, of a zero, right? So it's the year of grand awakening to yourself. Is right? that what the year of zero means? Grand yes. awakening? Yes, yes. It's the zero of, if you imagine an egg, right? right. So we are in this process. Um, when the chick is ready, yes? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. The chi when the chick is ready, it can, you know, the, with, use the beak, yes, and, and yes. make a hole, yes, and then the shell automatically is open. So let's say that many spiritual people or many people who are on the spiritual path, right, path right now, yes, they are still in this egg, yes, in this shell, right? Okay. Like, I'm not sure if I, if I can, if I can say something. I'm not sure if I'm crystalline child crystalline child or star child or I am awakened or not, right? They are still in this incubation, incubation process, right? But uh, maybe today, maybe tomorrow, maybe next year, yes? It will be the day for them when they, they try to do this little scratch and say, I am ready, right? To, 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 to discover who I am. And that's the great awakening, who I really am, who am I really? Thank you.